Loveless is one of the first books published with an aromantic and asexual protagonist. Ar aromantic means one who experiences little to no romantic attraction, asexual means one who experiences little to no sexual attraction. At one point in the book, the protagonist starts to think she may be aromantic, and she states, I had just spent my whole life believing that romantic love was waiting for me, that one day I'd find it and I would be totally, finally happy. But now I had to accept that it would never happen. Even though I'd long for these things, I knew that they'd never make me happy anyway. This is a very good example of a mononormativity, which is the widespread assumption that everyone is better off in an exclusive romantic relationship and that everyone is seeking such a relationship. The protagonist knew that she would not be happy in a romantic relationship, yet she was expected by society she was, or it was still sad that she would never want that. Therefore, the question is presented, why should action be taken to negate the adverse impacts of conformity in a mononormative society? Conformity has a negative impact on minority groups such as those in the romantic spectrum and hinders general human experience. Today I will be arguing that the conformity of a mononormativity in society is detrimental both psychologically and socioculturally to aromantics, which can be yeah, which can be negated by starting to spread awareness on the negative impacts of singleism. A mononormativity induces negative psychological impacts on a majority of the aromantic spectrum community. These impacts can exclude, include experiences such as ostracization or depression. Kipling Williams, a professor of psycho psychological sciences, states that when a person is ostracized, the brain's dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, which registers physical pain, also feels the social injury, and that ostracism can result in depression, hopelessness, and feeling of, feelings of unworthiness. People in the aromantic community face ostracization every day because of a mononormativity. In the 2020 Aromantic Census, conducted by the Aromantic Union for Recognition, Education, and Advocacy, or AURA, uh, their data showed that roughly 26% of participants were at one point excluded from social activities because of their romantic orientation, and 15% faced familial rejection. These were found to cause some sort of negative mental impact on 81% of participants. A study done by Mara Yule, who is a PhD in psychology, found that asexual individuals had a higher rates of suicidal tendencies, anxieties, and more. While asexuality and aromanticism are by no means the same thing, both communities face similar struggles and the two are often conflated. Hence, mononormativity and its conformity causes people in the aromantic community to have higher chances of depression, and anxiety, and suicidal tendencies. Another prominent effect is its negative sociocultural impact on the aromantic community through its encouragement of discrimination and stereotyping. It has been shown by Bella DiPaolo, an author of a book on singleism, that singles are often seen as immature, maladjusted, and self-centered. This encourages infantilization and stereotyping of aromantics, which then leads to discrimination. In another study done by DiPaolo, it was found that when rental agents were choosing applicants for housing, marital status directly affected their choice. In fact, when looking over examples of housing discrimination, they rated discrimination against singles as more legitimate than discrimination against virtually all of the other groups. Also in the aromantic census of 2020, 48% of participants reported that people were trying to fix or cure them, as well as 21% who experienced verbal harassment. This discrimination is vast, and it would be less so if mononormativity wasn't as prevalent in society. There's also the issue of how mononormativity hinders aromantics in society. It has a negative sociocultural impact on the aromantic community by its discouragement of nonconformity to the rest of aloromantic society. Michelle Gelf Gelfand, an American cultural psychologist, found that um, through study, the negatives of synchrony. She found that synchrony uh, causes reduced input for minorities in a group setting, and it, that it reduces um, diversity and stifles creativity. Mononormativity can be considered a type of synchrony as aromantics are less outspoken about their perspectives on topics challenging mononormativity and may enter into an unwanted relationship to conform. Alice de Tocqueville, a political philosopher of the 1800s, wrote a book on democracy in the 1830s to 1840s America. He discussed the ideas of aristocracy versus democracy in the sense of diversified interactions. He wrote aristocracy had made a chain of all the members of the community from the peasant to the king. Democracy breaks that chain. Aristocracy can represent uh, a mononormative society, and democracy can represent one free of a mononormativity. 
Mononormativity, whether it tries to or not, creates a hierarchy in which romantic relationships have a higher standing. There are many aromantics who do not want a romantic relationship ever, uh, yet because of this um, in mononormativity and its hierarchy, they pursue one. There are many who think mononormativity and aromanticism do not exist. Helen Fisher, senior research fellow at Kinsey Institute and author of internationally best-selling books on the science of love, was interviewed in 2014. She was asked to explain why she said romantic love is an addiction. In her response, she said romantic love is a universal craving. While she is not directly speaking towards a mononormativity, she is agreeing with the norm without mentioning the harm it entails. The 2020 aromantic census also shows that many people do not believe in aromanticism. Of the participants of this uh, census, 82% said that um, when telling others of their romantic orientation, they responded by not taking it seriously, ignoring it, or dismissing it. As well as uh, stated attempts to fix participants, um, not yet, it was found in a study in 2016 that around 1% of the world's population identifies as aromantic. This doesn't hold true also because of previous discriminatory actions that have you know, shown um, because of this dismissal of mononormativity, the general public uh, automatically thinks that if someone does not experience romantic attraction, they are broken. There are ways to counteract mononormativity, though. Um, the normalization of an identity often helps with the denormalization of a normative, as was shown through other LGBTQ plus identities, and AURA works to spread awareness about aromantic identities through creating and collecting resources for education. They do a biannual census and are even working with Jessica Kingsley Publishers to create a book on aromanticism, and they also help out with Aromantic Spectrum Awareness Week. This, of course, does have limitations. These organizations need awareness spread about themselves before they, before they can actually spread awareness on aromanticism, and while they are trying, it takes time to normalize these topics. Another option would be to spread awareness, but not on aromantic identities specifically, Starting by spreading awareness about singleism and how mononormativity is harmful may work better. For example, there should be more studies uh, done on singleism. Uh, even casually mentioning a mononormativity in a classroom discussion would help. This still has limitations, such as not being taken seriously or people uh, still not listening or caring about the issue. However, it would still take significantly shorter and is presented in a way that is more palatable to the general public. Um, while this may end up conflating aromanticism with being single, spreading the word on singleism, and using that as a stepping stone to a mononormativity and then to aromantic awareness seems to be the quickest and safest um, solution. This would then accomplish the goal of decreasing a mononormativity and the conformity that comes with it. Okay, Ava. Uh, the first question is uh, how valid and reliable are the sources you've used? Um, how do you know and which um, sources didn't work? Right. Uh, so all my sources were um, pretty reliable. I checked authors and publications both for credibility and um, many of my sources were peer reviewed. Um, there were a few sources that didn't work, uh, such as there was a poll that I found that was done on um, a romantic specific views on a mononormativity, but sadly this poll was not officially published and also did not have a listed author, so I couldn't verify its credibility, so um, therefore I didn't use that. Um, and there was also, um, um, right, there was a study done by uh, Tina Vares, which I didn't get to include in the presentation, but it's in my paper. Uh, Tina Vares is the senior lecturer of sociology and anthropology um, she's well, been a lecturer of those things since 2005, and um, well, that, that's an example of the peer-reviewed article I used. But, yeah. Okay, thanks. And how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources that you looked at? Uh, right. So, um, for instance, there was um, an author of a thesis who I also didn't get to include the presentation, but was in my paper. Um, his name is Constance Bougie, and um, his master's thesis was on um, aromanticism, and so, uh, yeah, um, in that thesis, it was, um, there was a line in it that said something along the lines of, to, like, the first person who got to say 
uh, the word aromantic to like a million people in the next five years, um, and he would give them like a shake on the hand or something. Uh, the point being that um, the um, he had like displayed in his thesis that uh, aromanticism is a very not talked about topic and is also um, it would be very hard to get it that much um, recognition in such a short amount of time being five years and so my conclusion uh, about is it all about spreading awareness so um, I guess it's kind of responding to that by like I agree with that and so here's what I'm thinking and also in a way like this presentation is me attempting to um, assist in the spreading of awareness because now people are listening to it and they will um, maybe be interested in research the topic tell other people mm. okay okay well great thank you, thank you.